Hello, welcome back to A Boring Revolution, your number one news source for everything in regards to The Boring Company. Uh, welcome back, my name is Will, got another predictions episode for you today, not done one for quite a long while, so I thought we'd get back into this. So uh, let's commence with the predictions. So, the format we're going for this year is we're going to say these are 2020 predictions, so we'll go back and have a look in 2020 and see what happens. So this is episode 10, my 2020 predictions. If you've not seen this in the past, I put basically what I do on these episodes is I predict something, then we look back at it in around 12 to 18 months and decide whether I was correct or whether I was badly wrong. So prediction number 10. This is based on recent news and a bit of common sense and a bit of what I hope to happen. The Boeing Company will modify existing Maxwell supercapacitors for pods and utilise them for regenerative, regenerative braking and acceleration in these pseudo capacitors. And these pseudo capacitors, also known as ultra capacitors or super capacitors, they're basically the same thing. Um, they store energy in a very, very different way from batteries. In a battery, is an actual chemical reaction when you're actually charging the battery, whereas uh, your super capacitor is an actual, uh, you're storing that electricity in almost like an energy field between two plates. Um, a bit like if you were putting lightning in a bottle. That is some, sometimes used as the explanation for what's happening with a supercapacitor. Um, but I'm presuming it's a lot more complicated than that. <laughs> uh, supercapacitors uh, will bear the brunt of heavy loads in the pod for brief periods. And that's the main reason for utilising this system. Is they want to minimise the amount of damage that's done to the batteries from uh, heavy acceleration and heavy braking. And if you can take... Uh, those you know periods of heavy acceleration and heavy braking and just utilize the ultra capacitors for those uses then that battery is going to last a lot lot longer and it's going to degrade much slower so why would i do this the main sort of four reasons uh, super capacitors are able to discharge and charge 50 times faster than the lithium ion batteries and that's the best lithium ion batteries on the market 50 times faster is 5000 percent more so you can do a lot lot more in a very short period of time and it's not going to cause excessive damage to the actual capacitors um, so again that that's a really good use case for this system uh, modern supercapacitors like those developed by maxwell technologies are getting much more energy dense over the last 10 years there have been massive improvements there have been really excellent breakthroughs in uh, supercapacitor technology and maxwell has been the, at the head of that development uh, used in a hybrid uh, sort of a battery slash capacitor hybrid system this results in better performance and less degradation uh, the per this perfectly fits this use case for the actual boring loop or the bo boring pod system. So we've got rapid acceleration, which is happening fairly uh, every sort of five to ten minutes. You're getting this rapid acceleration from the pods. And then you obviously got the, the rapid deacceleration at the end of the journey. So if you can take those instances where you're doing rapid acceleration and rapid deacceleration and just utilize the super capacitors, that is gonna greatly improve performance and also reduce battery degradation. Thus, in the 20 year lifetime of these pods, it's gonna save the Boeing company a lot of money and a lot of maintenance. Is this feasible for the Boeing company? I had a long, hard think about this. And I think it is, especially with all the expertise that are here with Maxwell Technologies who are going to be integrated into Tesla. And obviously they then may be subcontracted out to a Boeing company to help with the development of the pods. 
Although, although uncommon, a hybrid system could be introduced into pods fairly quickly and easily. These kinds of systems are very rare. They are mainly used in buses. However, I think this use case is an even better uh, way of using capacitors than in a bus. Certainly in a bus makes perfect sense as well, but I think for the rapid acceleration, this is perfect. It relies on a, a fairly large bank of interconnected supercapacitors. And when I say a bank, I mean a very large module, maybe up to six foot long, uh, 10 inches wide, maybe 12 inches tall. So we're talking a very large, uh, heavy uh, unit. That's what you need because they don't have the energy density of the batteries. With Maxwell Technologies team, which is a very, very, very good team, Maxwell was one of the top three supercapacitor manufacturers and uh, developers in the world. They clearly have the team to do this. The R&D required to build and develop such a system can be reduced down to nine months, and I think potentially even less than that. Uh, Skeleton Technologies, which, is, which was one of Maxwell Technologies' uh, biggest competitors, has recently developed a compact 170 volt module specifically for drivetrains. So they intend to implement that in the buses. This is a great example of where the technology is going and potentially I believe Maxwell could build something that's even more powerful than that 170 volt module. So being honest with you, cost is definitely the main issue but i believe if they built a specific plant for manufacturing uh, these supercapacitors in the usa it wouldn't even need to be that large could be could be easily less than a hundred thousand square feet uh, could be further reduce the uh, economies of scale and with extra automation costs could come down considerably making this a lot more feasible uh, pseudo capacitors would have a 15 to 20 year life cycle potentially 25 years so again you, you know you're getting a lot of use out of these things so if they are quite expensive you can uh, spread that out over the cost of the pod so overall it's not that much when you think about all the benefits that you get from those super capacitors final thoughts i really 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 like this idea i think there's a lot of benefits from using super capacitors both in the added acceleration from uh, reducing battery degradation to all the extra power that you could grab from uh, regenerative braking because you could easily um, soup up the regenerative braking system that is currently used on the Model X and easily um, increase the capacity to put that into the supercapacitors so it has the perfect use case for the loop network. Somewhat complicates the pod design. I'm not going to argue with that. However, uh, performance improvements negate this negative point. It could eventually lead to rapid improvements in supercapacitor densities. I think with the backing of Tesla uh, and the team at the Boeing company, they potentially could get another 30, maybe even 40% out of existing supercapacitors with the right systems and manufacturing processes in place. Uh, and that's basically it guys thank you thank you thank you for watching do appreciate everyone tuning in tell me what you think about this channel tell me what you think about this prediction do you think it was a, this is a good idea is this a bad idea is this going to cost too much does this have enough benefits to be you know cost effective to be useful for the system if you have not done so already please like and describe and go and join me on discord discord is a great place to uh, have a chat with all the other people that are involved in the uh, uh, Boring Revolution space. If you're interested in the Boring Revolution or Tesla or, or even SpaceX, please come and join me on Discord. I'd love to have a chat with you and put forward you know, some of your ideas for this system. Uh, I'd appreciate some feedback on Prediction 10. Again, tell me what you think about this. Is this a good idea? Is this a stupid idea? Are you unsure of the benefits? You know, you, you tell me in the comments below. Uh, also, I wanted to say a big thank you to everyone that's supporting me on Patreon. If you'd like to make a contribution to this channel, please click on the link below in the section below and uh, maybe make a small tip on the Patreon to help me out. 
I have four excellent, amazing Patreons who support me every month and they really help me with this channel ensuring that I can do the best possible uh, presentations to you guys. Those amazing people are Ashley Hill, Mike McLean, David McKay and Christopher Kinsey. Thank you so much for supporting me. Really do appreciate it, guys. Um, yeah, and that's it, guys. Thank you for watching this episode. Hopefully see you around soon. And remember, guys, don't be boring. See you soon. Goodbye.